Hey there, fellers. Well, it's another winter weekend, meaning I'm out in the barn. Um, rustled up a whole lot of parts and tools and all that good stuff this last week. Um, did a little bit of work yesterday on Friday. Had my daughter out here in the barn with me, so I'll show you. Um, we just got to kind of prep so we can do what we got to do today and tomorrow. So. Let me show you a little bit of what I've come up with and what we're about to do. First off, we got a new tool for the barn. Um, this is actually my dad's compressor he's had for a long time. This is an old compressor, um, but it's been rebuilt. Got a new motor on it, newer motor anyway. Um, I've got to get a valve still because I like to have a valve to valve off the... the um, all the lines because otherwise they leak down she was at 140 pounds yesterday you can see we're down to 100 pounds already so yeah we're gonna put a valve in line but i plumbed in a couple of chucks so we can have multiple um lines coming off i've got my feed here that goes out to my outdoor reel i've got this reel here which i think i'm gonna move or change he's got a reel he sent with it with some more hose so we'll see what we end up doing with that but regardless it's quieter it's much more of a commercial duty the tank's almost twice as big, um, so should uh, should serve my purposes a lot better. He's retired and moving up to the Upper Peninsula um, and needed something small and portable for what he's doing now. He hasn't worked on cars in a long time, so it was a, was a good trade. I bought him his new one and got this, so um, 300 bucks for, a, for a, a, a good commercial duty compressor like this is a steal, so... Um, you know, I'd spend a thousand or more, thousand to fifteen hundred on a, you know, a big box store commercial grade compressor. And granted, it would have a bigger tank and a, and a shade bigger, com bigger compressor, but it it wouldn't be the level of old school quality that this is. So anyway, did that yesterday. Got to get a different plug, but it runs. Just gotta get it going right. So you can see, I finally got off my ass, stopped being lazy, and. Um, Ava and I went across the street yesterday and took the gator and we got the engine crane out of the bus. Put it together so that I was able to move this axle over off to the side and kind of used it to help get this cut off roughly in place. So we got that. Now, our collection of parts for the week. We've got a couple of U-joints. Um, these are both 1710 series, Spicer 1710 series, but we've got uh, the yoke on the Ford, uses the strap style, so we got one of those, and then Pete uses the, uh, um, I don't know what you want to call it, the other style, the Pete uses kind with all the end caps, so, um, you know, the one on the Pete was shot. I had a good joint at the opposite end, and I've got good joints in the Ford drive shaft sitting over there. You can see them. But, you know, both of these are probably 20 plus year old joints, and we're doing all this work for another 100 bucks or so in a couple joints. It's crazy not to put them in. So, don't got to worry about being on the side of the road with a blown joint because there was a, you know, a section of of cup that didn't get fresh grease put to it because it's been sitting for so long and that's that's can happen you know when they sit like this you know yeah you can grease these zerks but after they sit for so long it doesn't mean that that grease is going to make it all the way through and it might make it through two or three out of the four crosses but is it going to make it to all of them and the one it doesn't make to it's going to dry up and it's going to fail and it's not going to fail at a good time so we we're putting new joints in it done deal um grab this threaded big 10 ton jack or whatever it is from my dad unfortunately he won't let me steal it he wants it back that's a bummer um here we're getting to the the meat of the matter so we went to the welding shop and we got some gear um needed a new um um not tip. Why is the word escaping me? Um, um, nozzle. So we got a new welding nozzle. 
Um, I've got tons of new tips already that I have in stock. I actually bought two pair. got another pair hanging on the shelf over there for future, but my MIG gloves had holes in them and were not really doing their job anymore, so we got a couple pairs of MIG gloves. Um, got one of these sweet, uh, uh, we'll see how it works, Mark All Silver Streaks for making marks on metal that'll not rub off and stuff. A little more, fi a little more you know, detailed than what a paint pen is going to do. We got a tip cleaner because I couldn't find mine for the torches. Um, and then we also got, now this is not crazy high end. Um, it's a weld mark. It is, um, significantly higher end than the one I had. The one I had is about 10 years old from TSC. It was probably 50 bucks. This one is, uh, about three times that price. It's not a solid, you know, $400 helmet, but I think it's going to work a lot. My other one was due for, for new glass and shields and it was hard to see out of and, um, for doing something like this frame, I want to set myself up for success. So, so we've got a new welding helmet. Um, we have a whole bunch of, there's a couple drill bits. Um, we got a step bit for some of the bigger holes and we've got a whole bunch of grade eight, um, bull three quarter and half inch bolts for our fish plate bolts and our hitch and all kinds of good stuff. So there's a whole bunch of money in hardware right there. Um, all cap screws, not cap screws, all flange bolts. They're not cap screws, they're hex head. But I did all flange bolts because I've been doing a whole lot of reading and watching videos on this whole frame stretch deal. And a lot of people are saying use use uh, um, flange bolts because it spreads that load out a little bit. So that's what we're doing. I don't think it's going to hurt. Let's put it that way. Um, then on the air suspension side of things, so the Pete obviously like any other factory truck with air ride has a leveling valve that leveling valve is right here it's attached to the axle and it goes up so you can see but it goes up to that arm and you know the height and and congruently the weight that's applied to the chassis is telling is you know let allowing air into the bags as needed so when it's light that valve is going to be pulled down and closed as it loads up it's going to load push that arm up and allow more air in that way it maintains a standard ride height across all loads that's all fine and good i'm probably never if if ever it's rarely going to have something on this fifth wheel plate it's going to have a goose ball right in here and you know my well while awesome and huge in the scheme of pickup trucks you know my twenty six thousand gbw um diamond c gooseneck is not heavy compared to what this truck would normally have hauled. So I want to maintain a comfortable ride when it's empty primarily, but also when it's just got that light load from a gooseneck on it. So I want controllability. So what we've got here is a couple of air valves. Um, these have a, they're, they're two position valves, see the two wires there. Um, they're normally closed and then they have a, a fill and a dump function. So then we've got some, a couple of momentary three position switches. We've got a couple of inexpensive air pressure gauges and um, kind of the, the dump valve that allows us to not just sound horrendous and um, filters out some of that air and moisture as it dumps. But anyway, this will allow us to in the cab and obviously I prepped for my front air ride build and I just bought everything at the same time so I've got it already so really now all I've got to do is fabricate the all you know it's just nothing but I've got to fabricate the brackets for the front end and buy the bags and the shocks of course so but what this will allow me to do is have just those switches right on the dashboard that allow me to either dump the air when I want to back up underneath the trailer or for whatever reason or then build to whatever pressure I want. And I'm sure that what we're going to find is there's going to be, you know, when the truck's empty or when it's got the gooseneck on it, we're going to have a certain pressure that is going to be, provide the best ride. Um, you know, and it's probably not going to be all the way up at 120 pounds like the compressor is putting out. You know, we might find that it's only 20, 30 pounds when it's empty. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Um, so, um, so we'll see how, how that goes, but we've got everything there. We've got the, um, some cutting wheels and, and, uh, flat discs and all that stuff. We've got a couple airbags. We've got another 30, 30 brake can. And last thing 
I got a hold of was, uh, um, well, that there is steel for the fish plates on the frame stretch, and then we got some, um, some, what is that, two by eight tube steel, and some quarter inch plate for, obviously, for the trailer hitch. We got a couple D-rings, we got the hitch insert, um, or receiver, I should say, not the insert, um, some junction boxes, um, and uh, one of the more modern style modular um, lighting cables, so, so we can, and we'll be able to put that, you know, whether it's up here or whatever, we'll be able to put that, that, um, that cable, lighting cable receiver so we can use it for both the gooseneck and the ball hitch. Um, but we're gonna have basically a, you know, those plates are gonna come down here, down the side, and then we'll have those tube steel running laterally across, they're, they're, exact, they're cut pre-cut to exactly 34 inches wide. So they'll run, you know, one right down here, one a little farther back, the hitch will tie to both of them, plates coming down the sides. We'll probably do some more gusseting on that receiver tube. But anyway, that's all there too. So, um, and I wanna point out again, I, I know I always say this, but I want to reiterate to people who are, might be watching this and thinking about truck projects. And I encourage you, take it on, jump into it, teach yourself, but don't, don't think that it's easy and don't think that more importantly that it's cheap. Go in eyes wide open, realize that all this stuff, it's not as easy as just going out and paying, you know, a couple, three grand for an old semi you are going to put thousands of dollars into it. You are gonna put thousands of dollars into it even if you do it cheap. Um, all this stuff that I just showed you, you know, gauges and valves and hardware and tools and steel, you name it, you joints. I spent over a thousand dollars this week on just little stuff and there's nothing major to show for it. A couple of airbags, I guess, is the big, the, the most visible portion, but you know, just little stuff, just to, to be prepared to do something like this, excuse me. So just, you know, again, go into it eyes wide open, realizing, you know, what it entails and realize too that I'd love to save them all. I'd love to see every old truck back on the road and looking sweet, but it's just not reality. Some of them are beyond saving. Some of them just are gonna take too much time and money to get to that point. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with not really admitting defeat, but admitting to say, hey, maybe this just isn't, isn't viable it's not feasible um you know because it is expensive it is very time consuming and very dollar consuming so anyway off my soapbox about that we're going to get started what i'm going to do here is i'm going to try to use the torches to put a nice clean cut on this so first i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to double check my measurements on that shaft to make sure that we have the right you know that our cut line marks here are in the right spot then I'm going to go through and first I'm going to score those cuts with the angle grinder. So I've got a nice visible beveled line. Then I'm going to start clamping some steel in so that we've got a guide for the torch. And we're probably going to, we'll see, I'll probably torch the top and sides, that bottom cut down here. I may do with the angle grinder to finish it off to be able to keep it nice and straight. Um, but then once that's done, obviously we can make our bevel. We can then start the process of, you know, clamping steel and getting this thing lined up and string lined and get it so it's perfect before we tack it in and weld it. So, um, let's get All right, started. so I've gone back and forth on this measurement. I have now more than quadruple checked everything. You know, before when I made all these notes and made my initial cuts, I was, um, you know, just kind of guessing, I shouldn't say guessing, but you know, we were comparing, you know, it's not exactly easy to measure and say, okay, yeah, this, this, you know, yoke is two inches closer to the, to the axle center line than what the other axle is, yada, yada, yada. So I got underneath here and you know, where this cutoff sits right now, I got an exact measurement of 71 and a half inches from outside of U-joint cup to outside of U-joint cup. I then went over to my shaft. I played with you know, full compression versus full extension on the slip yoke came up with where I wanted to be, which at rest, like it is right now, I want to be a half inch from full compression. I want to give this a little bit of wiggle room for like when you got to pull the drive shaft and stuff. And so what we came up with is we've got our mark on the frame cut on the Peterbilt. 
Um, and then I, you can see how many different iterations I came up with and remeasuring and retweaking. And then I also knocked out the old, whatever it was, putty plugs um, that were in here, which I'm thinking these were quarter fender brackets or something along those lines. I'm, I'm thinking quarter fender brackets because the, you know, the old, um, get you out here, the old uh, spring hanger was like right here. So, you know, front of tire was back in here. So yeah, I think those were quarter fender hangers that they filled with putty because it was where they're, um, when they double framed it, I don't know. I'm guessing. I think the double frame was added, is, is my guess, um, when they made this into a wrecker or this into a wrecker. So anyway, I knocked those out. That gave me a good reference point. It was actually about a quarter inch difference. I was measuring off of fuel tank straps up here, but I also noticed that they they changed it when they added all this winch and wrecker stuff. They pulled the fuel tank, so I don't know if that was accurate, but I trust the original drilled holes in the frame. I don't have much else to measure to to make sure that my cuts are equal length. So you can see what I did is I found my final mark and I took the the angle grinder and I cut a bevel into it as a permanent mark. I also know what the measurements are, so don't worry. Now I'm going to take a nice brand new flap wheel on the angle grinder and I'm going to take and I'm going to clean the area around the cut because when I torch this, I want nice clean metal. Otherwise it's going to be poppy and acting funny. So, so we'll clean all four cuts, then we'll get to clamping and, uh, um, using the torches. All right. So as you can see, what I've done here is I've put these two C clamp, these two pieces of tube steel, about a quarter inch. I just used my torch head, which we got all cleaned up and ready to go. I use my torch head as a guide. So if I hold it right where I want it to be, I'm going to be able to run right down and use that. I squared these up to the frame. So ready to make a cut. So I'll let you guys watch this one. Hopefully it works. And uh, then I'll do the other three and then we're ready to start putting this thing together. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> take you up and show you what we got here but obviously as you can see yeah, I can get this sand pulled down that is a pretty nice clean cut 10 actually probably 30 to 40 times faster than my idea of using the cutoff wheel and easily cleaned up we are we are ready just to take the flap wheel to that and be good to go ready to bevel it out so I'm gonna get on with doing these other four 
and uh, hopefully they go just as easy. Okay, got all four cut, all four flap wheel down. Um, that is the way to do it. That made for some very, very nice cuts um, and very little work with the flap wheel, just what you would normally expect. So we're cleaned up inside and outside of the frame. Probably do a little more of that for actual welding, obviously, but um, it is time now to try the get the big gun out to do my bevel um, because it'll take a while with a four and a half inch. Um, but my big boy DeWalt here, I bought the wrong damn blades. I got all excited because I saw them on they were on clearance for two bucks a piece. But it's got a threaded head. I need a threaded grinding wheel, but I don't know. This one's got a little bit of life in it. She's a little small, but it's just so much faster than using the little one. So we'll see how this goes. All right, well, we got everything beveled out. So we'll see how much of this I edit. <laughs> All right, well, it's the next day. I'm an hour, hour and a half into it, and you can see she is welded again. All ground down, cribbing's out, jack stands are out, cranes let down, and um, as you can see, <coughs> these frames were totally different sizes. The Peterbilt was about a quarter inch taller, and somewhere between a quarter and half inch wider you can see on the top here it was shoot almost a half inch on the bottom there about a quarter here barely over an eighth down there back to a half inch so whether it's the Peterbilt varies or the Ford varies I don't know but you know it didn't turn out too bad for amateur hour here and again don't judge my welds I'm not a professional welder I never claimed to be so, um, but she's strong and that'd be the prettiest thing in the world, but it ain't bad. Sure as hell is good enough for the girls I go with. So I'm going to get to work on laying out these, uh, these fish plates now and, um, marking them to drill some holes and, uh, get them painted and whatnot and rust proofed and greased and bolted in here and we'll probably um maybe do a little welding on those two um just for just for extra insurance all right so we're getting on towards having the fish plates done um this is the first one i did it is obviously drilled 
Um, we're using three existing half inch holes on the back half of the frame and three of these existing mm, three quarter inch ish holes on the front half of the frame. Um, I hit the with the needle scaler, uh, pre-marked my edges because I think I'm going to at least do some stitch welds on the, you know, each end of this plate on the inside. Um, so I pre-ground that and then I hit this with uh, some of that rust, rust converter crap. I don't know if it works or not, but can't hurt. And then I don't, I don't know if it'll, how long it'll work or whatever else, but I'm going to use fluid film in between here. I really like fluid film. I use it on chassis and stuff. And even where, you know, you get wash out on chassis. Um, geez, do I have any fluid film? Mm, yeah, we got better part of it again. There's got to be another one in there. Yeah, there's another one. So, um, fluid film's like a lanolin based. Um, I use it on chassis and frames a lot on work trucks. Um, um, and it tends to stick even where you're getting wash out. This frame isn't gonna get any wash out. Um, so we're gonna try it. We'll spray both sides and then set that plate in there, bolt it on, then stitch weld the edges and maybe fill weld a couple of those other holes just to give us some more strength and all good. Um, so I'm about ready actually to get this one going. Um, soon as that one, that one I just wiped off with uh, wax and grease remover from my drilling process. Um, about my first step bit. I've never owned one of these, believe it or not. Pretty sweet. Um, so anyway, we'll get some primer shot on that one and. Uh, once that's drying, we'll get to work on bolting the other one on and see how Well, guys, it's the close of a weekend. Um, I would say the, the theme of today is you win some, you lose some. Let me show you why. So, man, it's a beautiful fish plate. You can see the burn through on the wells where I plugged the holes. Same thing here. Oh. What's that? That's my drive shaft. That was too long. <laughs> because I apparently, even though I measured it 18 times, I think, I, I mismeasured it. It was too long by about three quarters of an inch. Yeah, I know. Believe me, it sucks. Had it all in, got new joints in. Ready to rock. By the way, the old joints in the Peterbilt drive shaft, one was a 96 and one was a 97. On a good note, I did find the tag on that axle, and it is a 373, so I'm fine with that. So the reason the drive shaft is cut is because um, I'm gonna, I, I know what's gonna happen. I've been in this boat before with my drive shaft shop. They're great guys. They're gonna say, well, I mean, once you do that, you might as well do this, you might as well do this, and I'll have a $1,200 drive shaft. I don't need a $1,200 drive shaft. I've got a perfectly good drive shaft right here with brand new joints in it. Um, I've got a perfectly good welder over there. The female side of the slip yoke is beautiful. Nothing wrong with that. Got a brand new joint. So we're just going to buy this. Should be somewhere, meh, 50 to $100. Um, and we're going to weld it in. What do you guys think about that? Problem solved. I've already cut off. Well, we lost, we lost about a half inch on the yoke itself here. You can see from, from the weld. Eh, maybe, maybe a little less than half. If you, if you, if you take that middle of that weld puddle as the center of the joint. I mean, who knows where it actually was, but somewhere between a quarter, you know, three eighths, I don't know. And then we took off another inch and a half right there. So we've already lost almost two inches. But guess what someone who's smart is gonna do? <laughs> They're gonna test fit this before we weld it. So, anyway, but doesn't that frame stretch look sweet? 
in the end of the day, it didn't stretch very much, a few inches. But, I, you know, honestly, I don't think I would. It's hard to even get back far enough in this barn. I don't think I would want it any longer. About perfect. Um, you know, short of our mismatched frame rails, which, you know, by the time we get some toolboxes or something over there, nobody's going to see that. Um, so anyway, productive weekend. Yeah, we made a mistake. Not a big deal. We'll fix it. I am now going to make some notes on air fittings and nonsense that I need um, so I can procure those this week. So that way next weekend we can weld the drive shaft back together and install it and plumb air lines for this thing and uh, take it down the road. We'll replace the bags. Unfortunately, those bags are going to have to come back off when it gets sandblasted it is what it is, but we'll replace them for now so they hold air. I don't think these ones do. I suppose I could test them first. Maybe we'll do that. I, this one's so screwed up. I think it's completely torn, but I guess we could try it and see what happens. At any rate, though, um, whether we replace the bags or not, um, we're going to get this thing moving again. And, um, you know, brakes working. We'll leave these brake chambers. I have two new 3030s back there, but we are going to leave these on. Obviously, when it gets sandblasted, they can get blasted and painted and no big deal. And after paint, we'll replace those cans. Um, same thing with brakes. We won't do anything with brakes and seals and all that good stuff. Um, that'll all be done afterwards. I don't want any kind of sand contamination down in there. So we'll, we'll do all new. Um, I don't know about all new, but we'll pull it apart and inspect and see what we need to do. Um, linings are sort of thin, so I'm thinking we're going to do drums and linings and S cam seals and wheel seals and all that good stuff. Um, on a single axle, it's not that much money. So again, why not? But anyway, that's where we're at. Um, if, in case you're wondering, no, I'm not going to paint those fish plates on the facing in there or facing out, I guess it is because this truck's going to get sandblasted. There's no reason to waste paint on that. Um, we'll let that, uh, We'll let that just rust is what it is. So, well, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, what I think is going to be a pretty long video on the frame stretch of the L9000 frame stretch slash air ride install on the L9000. This was a big weekend, and, uh, yeah, the drive shaft thing sucks, but it's a minor setback. So, uh, you guys have a great week. We'll see you next time.